Welcome back. Now, the United Nations predicts that in 20 years, Asia will not be able to replace its population. And Singapore is one Asian country that is struggling with low fertility rates. The island recently reported its lowest total fertility rate ever. To increase awareness on this, a fertility index was created this year. So, what is this fertility index mm -hmm. and how does it work? Well, for answers, we look to Dr. Peter Chu, a gynecologist and chairman of A-Life, a non-profit volunteer welfare organization providing counseling services on fertility issues. We also have Madeline Ho, 35-year-old mother-to-be. She overcame a series of ovary-related diseases and is now four months into her first pregnancy. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks Thanks for coming good morning. in. Perhaps we can start with you, Dr. Chu. Tell us how this fertility index works. Right. Actually, it's an indicator of the fertility, fertility potentials of the individuals. It consists of a questionnaire. Uh, 16 questions for the females and 10 questions for the male and after you self-assess answer the questions you have a scoring system and if you are in the high risk zone that's uh, that means you need to go and see a doctor for further check oh so basically it's an indication to it tell you where you are in your stage of fertility so to speak yes yes and then after that knowing which stage you're at you can make the right recommendations right. whether they should see a doctor whether they should just continue trying or, right. or what it is a self-assessment I of see. your own potential. Yeah. I see. So, Madeline, how did you first, when did you first uh, take this fertility index? Uh? No, it's just launched actually. Oh, it's just launched, oh, so just you launch. weren't okay. Yeah, yeah. You can tell us a bit more <laughs> about your experience. In, you had some problems conceiving at first, is that correct? Yeah, about four years ago, I tried conceiving. So, um, at first, my husband and I tried on our own, then we realized it was not so easy. So, two years ago, we went to see Dr. Chu. So, in our first year of our consultation, I realized I had fibroids and endometriosis. So, that had to be cleared up with laparoscopy and medication injections. And in my second year, I found I got cysts, polyps, uh, and ectopic pregnancy. And the top that or my husband had colon cancer as well last year. Mm -hmm. So both of us had to go through our individual treatments and then we could try again at the end of last year. So we are very, very delighted that we were successful uh, early yeah. this year. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. I mean, Dr. Chu, let me ask you, so yeah. for someone like Madden's situation where some, yeah. there are certain things along the way, would these have been caught by the index, for example? Uh, yes, some of them may, you know, some of the indicators, like the questions mm -hmm. and all that. So it could be picked up by the self-assessment and the further check. The idea is that actually people take fertility as a tap. You know, it's so easy at will, but right. actually it's not true. So age is a very important determinant for fertility. I guess people often assume that even though I do it later, I can get help. I can go get you know, right. IVF or the different treatments, but there's not a cure all, right? Right, and IVF is a very complex procedure and it's not 100% success. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, I mean, what is the trend over the last decade? Do you see more com couples coming yeah. to see you for... We are actually matching the industrial, uh, industrialized uh, states. And, you know, the fertility rate is going down. People are getting married later, uh, thinking that fertility is easy, right? Yeah. And uh, older mothers, we well, are seeing. Perhaps, uh, perhaps they're not thinking that fertility is easy as such, but it's just their lifestyle choices, isn't it? They just choose right. to have um, children a bit later, and it's their own choice. choice. So, what do you say to that? Yeah, I, I, I suppose it is a personal choice, as you say. But if you know your body better, then you can plan it better. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know their own own self. So they don't know their own reproductive systems and they want to try, wait and try mm -hmm. later. And when they have problems, then maybe sometimes it may be too late. I mean, Madeline, when you look back at your experience, do you think you would have perhaps gotten married earlier or decided to have children earlier, for instance? Yeah, I actually for me in my case, I got married about 10 years ago. So looking back, actually sometimes I wish I've tried earlier. So maybe I might have escaped some of these problems. But I guess over the, uh, I mean, Dr. Chu, as we mentioned, is, so you're saying people don't realize that it is that much harder to have children later on and that, therefore, they don't think about it, not concerned about it? Right. Is this just, yeah. are you trying to create awareness to basically say that, exactly. think about it now? Exactly, yes. Okay. I see. Yes. So, Megalyn, what's your advice to other couples who perhaps might be facing similar situation to you? I would say to them, well, it's all right not to have children straight after marriage, but they, did, they, they definitely have to plan for it somehow in their marriage. And I say to all couples, both men and women, do not put off marriage, uh, do not put off having a child beyond 30 years old, because once you hit 30, you really do not know what problems you will have. Yeah, what's been the hardest experience for you so far? Mm, the hardest experience is 
It's like, you know, you want to do it, but each time you try, then you face an obstacle, then you have to go through the whole treatment process. And after the whole treatment process, you've got to start all over again. So it's like, after each treatment process, you've got to tell yourself, yes, I can do it. Then you pick yourself up and you try again. So you, there's a lot of self-motivation, a lot of support from the family. All these are very necessary to go through the whole process of conceiving. What about family support? Did you find that that was also essential in helping you you know, I, I guess, you know, we all need some kind of family support to help us through these times usually. Yes, I think family support is very, very important, especially when both the men and women face problems. Without family support, a lot of all these problems would have been very, very difficult to overcome. Because, like I said, after each treatment, it has a recurrent process. Then there's another process where you have to go through, um, where you have to motivate yourself and you tell yourself, well, tomorrow will be better. And, you know, the next month you can try again, the next month you can try again. So it's like without family uh, behind you to, to give you the support in these things, it's very, very difficult. Yeah. Okay. Well, Dr. Dr. Chu, sorry, let me, let me also yeah. ask mm -hmm. you, I guess because, uh, uh, as you mentioned, it is an, a, a lack of awareness on the part of, of people. Do you right. find that even if people are aware, I mean, because I guess, Maybe give us roughly, what's the timeline between each uh, treatment for fertility? People think, I well, can do it today and then I can do it next week again and try again, but it doesn't really happen that fast, right? right? That's right. It depends on the individuals. If you know that there's something, you are the high-risk groups, you know, depending on your age and so on, and so your medical histories and so on. So if you have something that is not okay, I suppose when you try for about six months to one year and nothing happened, it's better for you to, to seek help, mm -hmm. medical help. Okay, so age is also an important determinant. If you marry late, you don't even want to try for six months, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so that's considered part of a high-risk group, right? right? Yes. Um, what about male infertility? How prevalent is yeah, that? Yeah, well, it is a very important factor here. In fact, we are seeing a lot of uh, male problems. A lot of male things that they are okay all the time. They think they are macho, they are very, uh, strong, they are okay, but not necessarily so. And in fact, uh, two-thirds of uh, fertility problems are due to the male. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I guess what men don't realize, you can still be physically, in a sense, fine right. and strong and healthy, strong. but still be infertile yes, in that right. sense. Yes, right. Are there any signs that one can look for? That well, I think the lifestyle, the smoking, the uh, alcohol, all these can okay. affect the, the sperms and, you know, the, the histories of sexually transmitted disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you actually define um, fertility? You know, yeah. at, one, at what point, after how many months of trying, would you say that? Well, you, you know, the general textbooks will say that, okay, you try for about one year, you should, 80% should get pregnant. You try for about two years, about 10% should get pregnant. But I think we are looking at the trend that, you know, more and more people are having problems. So I would say that if you are young, below 30, and if you are trying for about one year, nothing happened. It's better to seek help. You know, fertility as it is, is not, uh, it's not physically harmful. It's not like, say, cancer, okay? But there may be some underlying causes. So it, it, this may be potentially uh, uh, harmful to your body. Right. So it's maybe better to have it checked up. And people often assume that once you go see a doctor, you're getting get treatment and all that, uh, no. drugs, but it's not necessarily, not sometimes necessarily. it's just other recommendations. Right. Just one last question, Madeline, I mean, if you want to share with women, other women out there who might be in a similar situation, what kind of, uh, you know, words of advice or encouragement would you like to say to them? I would say that it's not impossible to have children, no matter what problems you have, you just need to have faith and you need to have patience and you need to go along with a doctor that you believe in because in all these treatments, you may not be successful the first time, but so long as you have trust in your doctor and you, ha you believe in yourself and you have a loving relationship with your husband, conceiving is not impossible. Okay, so a relaxed kind of attitude as well. Yes, that's right. <laughs> okay, thanks so much. Thank for you. Thank you. We've been speaking with uh, Dr. Peter Chu, a gynecologist and chairman of A Life, and Magdalene Ho, an expecting mother in her mid 30s. If you would like to calculate your fertility level, you can do so anytime online at this website. It's alive.org.sg. I mean, it's one of those things. When you want it to happen, it doesn't happen, you know. But then uh, other times when you don't want it to happen, it often happens. <laughs> <laughs> There's that joke. It always says it's, it's really easy to become a father, but it's hard to be a real dad, you know what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see it just takes a saying. few seconds to become a father. But That's hey. true. <laughs> okay, well, this is Primetime Morning on G.